Reggie here, and I wanna welcome you to another one of my videos. In this video, we are gonna take some time to talk about some things that we need to stop doing when it comes to comics, because in many ways, these things actually waste money. And this is the second part of a series that I've been doing in which I'm highlighting things that we should not do or things that we should stop doing. In the first installment, I spoke about ways that people are wasting money on graded comics, and this video is more generic going to talk about comics as a whole. The very first thing that I have to highlight is that we have to stop thinking that comic book values only go in one direction. There are a lot of people that found their way to this hobby in 2020 and 2021. Folks came into the hobby because they were at home with the pandemic and they started playing around with their comics and they saw values going up. And many of these people believe that comic book values only go in one direction. And, and some of us that have been around also got swept up in the excitement of the massive run up in values. The truth of the matter is that comic book values don't only go up. And it doesn't matter whether you're talking about modern books or Silver Age books. Gen generally speaking, comic book values will fluctuate. Within a year, even the best Silver Age books will have some dips in value. Yes, over time they do increase, but certainly not what we saw in 2020 and 2021. And so for this reason, we have to, to reframe our thinking. We have to realize that we just can't spend any amount of money and allow the market to save us because the values are going to continue going up because that reality is not accurate. If you look at the data, what you will see is that comic book values across the board have started to decline. And in some cases, the values that we are seeing for really awesome books right now looks very similar to where those books started in 2020 and certainly long before 2021. So to this point, we also have to stop paying crazy amounts of money for comics. There are a lot of people that bought books in 2020 and 2021 that are now trying to sell those same books for those same dollar amounts. The economic environment that we are in right now does not look like what it looked like a couple of years ago. And so to that point, we cannot pay those same prices. Unless you're just extremely wealthy and you don't have bills or responsibilities or any of that other kind of stuff, I would encourage you to reframe your thinking to reflect the reality of what we are seeing right now in 2022. The next point that I want to make is that we have to stop buying all the variants all the time for every book every single time. Now, I am not saying don't buy variants. That is not what I'm saying. What I am suggesting is that we cannot buy all the variants all the time. And there are a lot of people that have been caught up in that. They've been swept up in the excitement of variants. Variants are dope. There is no doubt about it. The cover art is fantastic on a lot of these books. But the truth of the matter is that you cannot buy all of the variants all the time. So you may want to be a little more selective about which ones you pick up. And again, if you have a favorite title out there or a favorite artist that is doing some stuff, by all means, go after it. But when you're trying to buy 20, 30, 40 variants of every single number one that comes out, that might be a little too much, again, because the economics of where we are today look very different than what we saw in 2020 and 2021. The next point that I want to make is that we might need to stop buying solely based upon speculation. Without a doubt, speculating on comics is fun, and it doesn't matter whether you're doing it to make money or if you're just doing it for fun, for the, the possibilities of what could come from this being optioned or this appearing in a movie. That is fun, but the idea of speculating on comics solely for the purpose of making money based upon movies and TV shows might be something that we want to reconsider, and I say this for several different reasons. Just because a movie or TV show has been optioned doesn't not mean that that thing will ever see the light of day. 
just because it starts in production doesn't mean that it will ever be seen. And we certainly saw that with the Batgirl movie that was ultimately canceled. Now, that could be a one off situation. But when you look holistically at what is happening with Warner Brothers, you see a lot of movies and TV shows being canceled that were moving down the production path that suddenly have evaporated. And so if you bought a comic based upon that happening, you're now potentially left holding the bag with a comic that maybe you're not interested in at all. You simply bought it for the purpose of making some money. And again, there's nothing wrong with that, but you might want to reconsider. You might want to think about things a little bit differently as we move forward, because a lot of people out there are keeping their powder dry. They're not jumping on the bandwagon the way that they were in 2020 and 2021. So you might need to reframe your thinking as a result of what is happening right now. The other part of it is the streaming services are also cutting back, right? Many of the shows that they were going to produce have been eliminated because they have haven't been making as much money as they were making in the past. So the opportunity for a lot of these things to come to light has, has dimmed just a little bit. So again, something that I wanted to throw out there for people to consider. The next thing that I want to highlight is that potentially people want to stop grading every single book that comes out. Just because a book can be graded does not mean that that book should be graded. If you're not taking the time to think about the costs associated with grading combined with the turnaround time, combined with the values that we are seeing for comics, then you may be doing yourself a disservice. And I say this because there are some costs with sending a book off and it doesn't matter whether you're using CBCS or CGC or EGS for that matter. If you're sending a book off to be graded, there are some costs associated with that. There is also the turnaround time and potentially by the time you get a book back, its value could look very different than when you actually sent it in. So you want to take some time to actually think about that. Is this a book that I actually want to send in? What might be the value of this book by the time I get it back in six months or potentially even a year in some cases? You have to take the time to actually consider the ramifications of that. One of the things that I actually do is when I have a book that I think I want to send off to be graded, I set it aside. I have a specific bin set aside where I put books into and I revisit those books. Is now the time? Does this make sense? What's happening with the value of this book? I don't immediately find a book and send it in. I put it in the bin and I spend time thinking about it before ultimately sending that book in. The other thing that you may want to think about is maybe not using CGC or CBCS. If you have books that you want to get graded for your personal collection, for example, you may want to consider something like EGS. EGS actually has slightly lower costs in some respects than the other two. They certainly have better turnaround time and they also have a new case. So I, I wanted to make mention of that in this video because it's all about not wasting money and potentially if you go that route, that could be a way to actually save some cash in the long term. In an attempt to end this video on a positive note, I want to take some time to talk about some things that potentially you should start doing. One of the big things that you can potentially do during this time is to reinvest into your collection. And what I mean by that is that you may have books in your collection that you've never read. You may want to take the time to read those books. There may be books in your collection that need to be rebagged and boarded. Go ahead and do that. Organizing your collection, cataloging your collection are all great ways to still stay involved in the hobby without actually spending money. And I will tell you for a fact that there is a tremendous amount of, of entertainment and enjoyment that comes from uh, rebagging and boarding, reorganizing, reading and rereading books. And I'm literally doing some of that right now. I have books in this collection that I've never actually read. I'm taking the time to read them versus taking the time to spend more money on books that will come into the collection. So something for you all to consider. With that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch. If you enjoyed this video, I want to ask you to go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. If you have a friend out there that might benefit from this video, I want to encourage you to tag them on the video, share the video, encourage them to come on over and check it out. And if you are not yet subscribed to the channel, I want to encourage you to go ahead and do that. Tap that subscribe button, turn on 
notifications and that way you won't miss out on any of the content that comes out from my channel. If you need to reach out to me, you can do that on Instagram at Reggie Collects. Take care. Rolling, 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 rolling.